to Platinum Perspective. This is the show about beauty, psychology, and the intersection of the two. I'm your co-host, Sarah. And I'm Megan. Sarah and I are best friends who put the work in to get the most out of life, so you don't have to. (laughs) So today's going to be really fun for us. Hopefully it's fun for you too. (laughs) We're going to talk all about winter foundation. So as you can see, we have no foundation on. We have no makeup um, on our face. I think we both have eye looks and a little lipstick because we don't want to scare everyone, but we have (laughs) no, (laughs) nothing on our face. Um, And as the temperatures change, our skin changes. So I wanted to take an opportunity to walk uh, Megan and everyone who's tuning in along through like a winter skincare essentials for glowy foundation. So we're in California and the temperatures for us, they do change pretty drastically. But if you're in a place that snows, this will be even um, a more extreme, where there's a more extreme temperature um, difference between the seasons, this will be even more important to adjust your foundation routine to meet the weather and the season. Mm. So as winter weather tends to be harsh, lower temperatures and drier air, changing your foundation is essential to adapt to these conditions. So a winter foundation provides extra hydration, prevents dryness, and ensures your makeup stays flawless in the face of cold and windy weather, helping to maintain a radiant and moisturized looking complexion. So I just got back from Tahoe and it's really dry there, Lake Tahoe. Oh. Um, and we were in Nevada. So, uh, for part of it, and it's really dry and snowy. So my skin is pretty dry right now. So my usual summer foundation, it wouldn't work. If I put that on right now, it's just going to dry me out. So today we're kind of going to go through, um, what would be best for this type of skin and this type of weather. So it should be fun. Yay. I'm excited. I <laughs> I tend to do the same thing year round. So I, I'm interested to know how you changed up to accommodate the weather patterns a little bit more. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So rapid fire. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. Well, this sort of leads in from what I just said, but can I use <laughs> the same foundation product technique and application tools throughout the seasons? No. Let's change all of them. Product, okay. technique, and application. We're going to change them all. Yay. Okay. Uh, if you were only going to change one thing in your makeup routine when the temperatures drop, what would it be? So for our age group, right, we're not teenagers with super oily skin. Um, we are young moms. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. um, I would, I'm going to change my foundation base. So I typically do a powder foundation. So I'm changing that to a liquid foundation. Oh, okay. Okay. Good to know. And what is your favorite foundation right now? Okay. So my favorite, I know I've talked so much about Bare Minerals and I love it, but I've swapped it out for this season. So today, and I know you have it as well. um, I'm using the Rose Ink Soft Light Skin Smoothing Liquid Foundation. And this stuff is amazing. I'll talk a little bit more about what it is. Yay. Yes. I second that. I have not Yay. found a clean found and I've looked hard uh, for a clean foundation that mimics my La Mer, which is like mm. the ultimate yeah. be all for me. I love that stuff, but it's horrible for your skin. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I've been looking to swap it out for something and this is it. It's amazing. Yay. Yeah. Okay. I love it. I love oh, it. Oh, I'm so happy you love it. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Okay, so with that, let's just jump right into all the products we're going to use today, and I'll talk a little bit about them, and then we're going to do a full tutorial. Yeah. Um, So I'm going to start with uh, primer. So today I'm going to use the Rose Ink Radiant Reveal Primer Serum, and then that's going to be followed by Lyra Clinical, and this is a um, skincare, so it's SPF. 30. So it's skincare with SPF with a tent. So okay. this one, if you remember back to our episode with esthetician Carrie Gillespie, this is a product she sells and it's really amazing. So it is the Lyra Clinical <clears throat> BB Bright SPF 30. So those are kind of the two primers. 
And then I'm going to jump into foundation. So like I just said, we're going to be using the Rose Ink Foundation. <clears throat> now, I do love this foundation for fall as well, but my skin color changes. So um, in the winter, I'm much more fair. So rather than getting a brand new uh, foundation, <clears throat> I like to just take the one that I'm usually using, which is I am a 13 in, which is medium neutral. And that's when I'm more on the tan side. So I like to buy another shade, and this time I went with 8N, which is pretty fair, 8 neutral. Mm. And, I, and I'll show you during the tutorial, but I just mix the two. And that creates my perfect winter shade. So even when a, you know, a foundation, a makeup company has, I think this one has 31 shades of foundation, your perfect shade could still not be in there. And your, your skin tone changes all throughout the year. So I like to have a few on hand and sometimes I use just one and sometimes I mix them up and sometimes I use just another one. Um, but it's, it's nice to be able to mix and create your own perfect shade tone. Hmm. Okay. And then I'm also going to be using the Rose Ink Concealer. So I love this concealer because it um, has a doe foot. So let me show. This is a nice little doe foot. Um, so that's a really nice application tool that it just comes with, and it's really hydrating and moisturizing, um, but with good coverage as well. And then I'm going to finish it off with the Kosas, and this is um, a soft cloud, soft baked and smoothing talc-free vegan powder. So it is super soft, sheer setting and smoothing powder, and it's baked with skincare. So that's kind of going to be a finishing powder to create a foundation look. And then, of course, after that, I'll do bronzer and highlighter. But that's kind of the, the whole look for a moisturized, hydrating winter foundation look. Um, before we kind of get into the tutorial, I wanted to talk a little bit about Rose Ink. So we're not affiliated with them. But Rose Ink is a great example for any of our beauty brand founders listening. So I ride or die for my foundation brands that I have been using for 20 years. And I walked into Sephora less than a year ago and I had heard of Rose Inc., but I'm not super inclined to jump on board to, with a celebrity led makeup brand just because there's been so many in the past that are purpose, purposely like focused on the celebrity and not the quality of the product. Mm. So this brand is, um, founded by Rosie Huntington Whiteley, who is a former model. So I'd heard of it, but I didn't jump on the bandwagon right away. I wasn't really interested in trying it, but I walked into Sephora and they had an account executive there who I actually knew her from a previous brand. And right away, she had all the education on the products, all the education on the brand. Um, she brought me over to the gondola. We looked at everything and I totally fell in love with the brand. I bought everything. She tried it on me. Um, I bought everything and I've replenished multiple times. So for any brand founders listening, when you're cutting, don't cut those account executives because they are your key to customer acquisition. Like even though it feels small and mighty, that's how you're getting customers. I would have never tried this brand without that interaction with that account executive. Wow. So yeah, that's something something that's often cut and and it probably shouldn't be. I think it's it's a key to success. So some of the things I love about this brand and what it kind of stands for. So it is clean beauty powered by science. So it's high performance color and skincare. It has an adaptive skin balancing complex that visibly reduces redness, pores, and excess oil. So it has a targeted hydration complex with ectosin, an emollient blend of calm, replenishing, and hydrating the skin where it is needed. And then I wanted to read one other thing because I have it on my phone right here. So it they are partnering with a biotech company. So this is the first makeup brand that's doing this. And that's really interesting. I think that that's probably been needed in the space for a long time. But, you know, makeup brands will bring on a chemist to help develop their products. But to partner with an entire biotech company, that hasn't 
been done before. So the hmm. brand is founded by Rosie Huntington Whiteley and a biotech company. So that's really cool. And that's where a lot of the innovation is coming from. So a lot of their ingredients they're they're using is fermented reishi mushrooms, which support support the moisture barrier for plumper, smoother looking skin. And then lots of other natural vegan ingredients, a lot of vegetables, a lot of minerals. Um, and they've really done an amazing job. And so when did you first try it? I first tried it maybe, I, it's a new acquisition for me. So maybe like a month ago, I had okay. bought a few others and I was horribly matched in store by just like a salesperson at Sephora for these other ones. I brought them back <laughs> and I was looking around and I think I had texted you like I'm at my wits end. I, I bought this, I bought two others and I just really didn't like them and I was anyway, like willing. I think it was ones I recommended too. <laughs> it's okay because I think, you know, everyone needs a little bit different uh, texture for their skin. Yeah. And the ones I was trying were either way too sticky and thick or they were too runny. And I just, I was not going to budge from my La Mer until I had a solid option and I just wasn't finding it. So um, I went in and they tried to come match me again. And I, I said, no, I'm going to match myself. Don't please. I will do it myself. And I went to the Rose Ink counter, like you mentioned, and just tried a few of them on my skin. And I loved the way that they felt and the way that they looked. But, you know, you never really know until you bring it home and cover mm -hmm. your face in it to really know what it looks like on you. And I was so happy with the end result. And I think you mentioned too, I think this is so cool, but they use plant stem cells or something yeah. like that for a regeneration yes. of on your own face, which is amazing. They do, which that's, that's so cool. a lot of companies, a lot of clean beauty companies do. Um, Bare Minerals was a leader in that, but it is really cool. And I do always look for that for plant stem cells within foundation, especially in skincare as well. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. So. Well, and I think like speaking to your experience with, um, getting shade matched poorly. Yeah. So there's definitely like when you walk into a Sephora or an Ulta, there's different, different levels of employees. So there's like the basic, like minimum wage employee who's super excited to be there and loves their job, but maybe doesn't have experience in makeup application, but they're learning and trying. Yeah. Um, and then there are like the directors or the head of the store that definitely have a lot more experience, but I love to look for the brand ambassadors or the account executives. And that is going to be someone in the store who has a black outfit, but a tag for a brand. And it doesn't even have to be the brand that they work for. They could, oh. they could work for Rose Inc, but you're asking for like a closest product and they can help with both. And those women, I mean, it's, generally um, women or men, they have, um, depending on their age, I mean, some of them have like 30 years experience working wow. in store, mm -hmm. applying makeup. And those are the people you want to look for because they are the hands-on artists. Um, and that's oh. who I usually look for. But if someone like that is not available, then you can definitely color match yourself. And the best way to do it is they're going to do it on like your cheek. A lot of um, there are a lot of makeup artists that will recommend doing it on your neck. I prefer to do it on the cheek because it's a little bit easier to see, but you're just going to take a swipe here. I'm going to just show how to do it. You're just going to take a little dot of foundation and you'll just like do a swipe and see if it blends. So see, that's too light. That doesn't mm -hmm. blend. Mm -hmm. And then you'll just try, you know, like three or four. That's too light. So I'm going to mix it, but just try three or four and you can just do three or four swipes and both Sephora and Ulta have such incredible lighting in their store. So you mm -hmm. really can like get up close and see which one, um, which one matches. I've had people do it on their wrist too, which like, don't do that. It's your the skin on your wrist is so different than the skin on your face and it's not going to work. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. I definitely have had people suggest my neck before and I didn't know which way, but I, I yeah. want to see it a little bit on my face because <laughs> yeah. that's where it's going to go. That makes sense. Exactly. Put it where yeah. it's going to go. Um, okay. okay. Should we do this tutorial? Yeah. I think I'm missing some of your makeup. Uh, I don't okay. have it all here, but I'll just do the parts that I do have and you can show I, me how to do the rest. <laughs> well, I think that Megan's a good example because she doesn't have like 
the same product. So if you're watching at home and you don't have the same products, but you have something similar, yeah, you can just use something similar. So let me see. First, I'm going to tuck my hair away. I didn't bring any hair clips, but this will work. Um, I have a hair appointment soon for anyone watching. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry. It'll look better next week. Um, <laughs> okay. So I'm going to start by using a primer. So I think that, Megan, you have your primer and your SPF in one product for today, right? Yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah, I'm using the SkinCeuticals Daily Brightening UV Defense Sunscreen, and it's got a bit of a – it's like a, a cream fleshy tone rather than white. So it's, it has a little bit of coverage, but not very much. Okay. It's more like sheer. Okay, perfect. So – you're going to do that, and I'm going to use the Rose Ink Primer, and then I'm going to use the Lyra BB Cream, which is their primer SPF tinted moisturizer. Okay. Um, and when I spoke to your technique changing in the winter, <clears throat> so in the summer, depending on where you live, your home can get hot, your products can get warm. Um, so it's so wonderful to use a brush because your hands could be warm and you're applying with a brush for everything. During the winter, I love to use just my fingertips to apply everything because your hands are warmer, so you're warming up the product. So we don't need a brush till the very end. Um, so I'm oh. just going to put a few dabs of the primer on, and let's let's go for this. Okay. So we're going to apply all over. We can. Now, is there any technique to the way you put this on or is, is there maybe later coming up for foundation, like going up or going down or yeah, side to side? I mean, I think up is genuine, generally like what people like to do um, to kind of push your skin up. Uh huh. It's not always possible, but yeah, I mean, you don't want to like be pulling Pull your, your skin, skin down. No droopy dog. <laughs> <laughs> Just up. Up, 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 up. All the cells go up. All the cells yeah. everything up. Yeah. Like, we will will them up there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> We're setting their intention. That's right. <laughs> okay, I'm going to do my BB cream next. Now, this one is a thicker, a thicker BB cream because it has the SPF in it. So I'm going to give it a minute on my fingertips. And kind of warm it up because when you put a really cold product on your face, it's harder to massage it in. So I've really warmed huh. this up. Okay. And then we're just gonna get this sunscreen all over. So yours is already on your primer and your sunscreen. Yeah. I do have we a darker sunscreen that's like a little bit more looks like that. It's the physical fusion UV defense and it, it does come out. I mean, you can wear it as like a foundation. It's so pigmented. Oh, that's like the revisions one. I love that one. Yeah. And then just go down your neck a little bit. Um, yeah, I just want sunscreen is good. Whichever one you choose is fine. And this okay. foundation we're using today is medium coverage, but it's buildable. So if you want a little bit more, you can definitely add more. Um, so you don't need a super pigmented sunscreen but I mean it is nice like look, look at how that sunscreen already applied like this could be okay to run out mm -hmm. and yeah it smooths things a little bit it yeah. looks nice yeah we can do a laser episode soon because I'm getting a new type of laser on this sunspot right here next month you are not the halo something else I'm going to try a spot treatment for this. So this spot right here oh. is a birthmark and I'm going to do the halo again, which I love, but I do have this like sunspot, I think from growing up in California and like driving the reflection. Um, so I'm trying a, a new type of, um, I'll have to come back with a name. I'm blanking on the name, but a new type of laser that's going to go just on that area. Cool. So we'll see something yeah. new. Yeah. All right. So I've got my primer and my sunscreen on. So now I'm going to do my foundation, and this is where I'm going to mix. So first I'm going to do my regular kind of fall shade, and I'm 13 in, which is for neutral. What shade are you? 
I'm 9W, which says light, medium, warm. Warm. And this okay. matches me pretty perfectly in my opinion. So I don't, I I don't mix it. it, but I'm sure as I get to closer to the summer, I'll need yeah. a darker Perfect. color. Perfect. Yeah. So I just did like a little, a little dot there. And then I'm going to add on top a dot of 8 neutral. So that's my light shade. And as the winter progresses, I might add more of this, but mm-hmm. – I've still had a little sun. I'm not totally fair right now. (laughs) You're not a ghost. I'm not a ghost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Okay. So then I'm just like mixing it really well together. And then I'm just going to apply it the same way that I applied my sunscreen is I'm going to first dab it on and then massage in with my hands. And does this go all the way under the eyes or around? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm putting it everywhere. We have eye makeup on today. Um, If we didn't, I still wouldn't put it on my eyes. I would leave my eyes bare until I put an eyelid primer and the eyeshadow on. Oh. Make sure you're getting it all around. So, yeah, foundation doesn't need to go on your eyes. Unless you don't use a primer and you're using your foundation as a primer. Some foundations work better for that than others. But I like to use an eyelid primer. I do too, but so you're saying you put that on before you do foundation or after? Um, After, but I don't put foundation on my eyelids. Oh, okay. Okay. Got it. Yeah. And so then I just like gently rubbing it and bring it all the way down the neck so there's no line. I'm going to blend it around my nose. Okay. We're going to need to get ourselves mirrors there. (laughs) I know. I'm looking down to see myself. Sorry, everybody. (laughs) I don't know how I did. I know. Same. You know, I used to do these tutorials for some bigger makeup companies without seeing myself at all because it was the way they used to film these like in the early 2000s. Yeah. Well, they probably know you're constantly like like, referencing yourself as you're putting it on as we are right now. (laughs) So. Uh That's, so, That's funny. so funny. I know. It's so funny. Okay. So this is pretty good. I love the way this foundation feels. So I like kind of just a medium coverage. If it was going to be like if I was going out or going to an event or doing something other than the day-to-day, I would do that exact same thing one more time for a little bit heavier coverage. Okay. Um, like if I was going to have a lot of photos that day. But for just the regular day-to-day of my super glamorous mom life, (laughs) I just need to do it once. (laughs) Okay. Um, So that's it. Uh, So next I'm going to do concealer. And I like to use this concealer in a few places, not just under my eyes. What concealer are you using today? Do you have the same one? No. No, I'm using – I have Westman Atelier, and it's like a foundation stick, but it's so thick that I use it as a – concealer and I have two shades so you have to tell me which one to use I have a lighter shade like shade zero it's really light and then shade two which matches my skin a little bit better okay look can I see the shades oh yeah so it's nice to have I love to have concealer be like one or two shades lighter than your skin to kind of brighten that area okay cute this so, is the lighter shade and this is the darker. I think for right under your eye, let's use the lighter shade. Okay. And then I do a few dots of concealer in other places, like where I have a few sunspots. So for that, if you have that, I don't know if you do, your skin is pretty flawless. <laughs> but for that, you could use the darker shade. Okay. So for this rose ink one, like I said, it comes with this really great doe foot. So I'm just going to dab, 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 dab and a C around the bottom of my eye. And for this side, I'm going to add a little extra over that beautiful sunspot. (laughs) (laughs) And I have another sunspot right here on my cheek. I add a little extra concealer too. And then similar to the foundation, I'm just going to use my finger to kind of warm it up. Um, You know, during the summer, if my hands are really warm or my skin is a little bit more oily, this is where I would use a sponge or a concealer brush. Oh. But for today, okay. for winter, I just really like to use it on my with my fingers. 
kind of get that all over. And then I forgot to mention, it's just like habit for me, but when I'm using my hands for any makeup products that are also skincare, when I'm done with that product, I just like put the extra on my hands. Okay. So the tops of your hands can always use some sunscreen. Um, so if it's something with skincare benefits or sunscreen, just put that extra product there. So you're not having to, to wipe it off. Okay. When you're doing your concealer under your eyes, do you yeah. go all the way up and around or just under? No. I, ju I just go to like the, the inner middle. corner. Okay. And then down and out. Okay. If I'm really tired, I just do it all. No. <laughs> <laughs> do your whole face. <laughs> My whole face with concealer. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm slightly rested today, so I just did it right over there. Got it. Okay. So it's hard to totally tell in the camera because we're not using a mirror, but I think that looks pretty good. Yeah. Your, yours looks good. Thanks. Yeah, it looks feel, feel moisturized. <laughs> I, I do like the finger trips. I've been using a brush this whole time. Yeah. I mean, I think during winter, it's so nice. The fingertip, you just like warm up the product a little bit more so it can set. Um, and then lastly, for a foundation look, for the winter, I always want to use a cream-based setting powder. So a lot of powders out there are amazing, but they're drying more. I would Actually, we should use the word they absorb. And you don't need that in the winter unless you have heavily oily skin. Mm -hmm. You just don't need to absorb anything and it'll actually create more dry patches on your skin. Oh. So I love this Kosas um, setting powder. It, like I said before, it's talc-free, it's vegan, it's super soft and sheer. Um, so I'm using Breezy Cloud. That's my shade. And I am going to use a brush with this because I don't think you can do it with your fingers, but um, I'm using my Morphe uh, foundation brush. So I'm just going to tap Buff it in, tap it off, get a little bit. And then I like to start my forehead and just kind of buff it in. And, and this is going on creamy. It's going yeah. on like a, a cream rather than a powder. It's a mixture of the two. So it's a okay. it's a cream-based powder. So it's both. What do you have to use today? I have Bare Minerals Matte. So this is a true powder foundation. Yes. And it's okay. a little bit too dark for my skin. So That's I do need your help. <laughs> I need to find a different color. But this is what yeah. I've got for today. So That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, you'll have to see it. I know. i got to take you shopping. I know. Let's go. Okay. That'll be so fun. I we could do Ulta and Sephora in one day. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Oh, They're I They're in different that. locations. But... I know. I know. Is your car fixed? Yes. I just thought of that because I was like, we can yes. drive together. Is your car fixed? Yeah, it's fixed finally. <laughs> we picked it up um, right before Christmas. So it was a really nice Christmas um, oh. surprise to have it back. It did take two months to fix, but whatever. Oh At gosh, least it's, it's back and it's – boy, it just drives a lot more sporty than the other SUV. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> The Porsche is faster. <laughs> it's faster and it it is so fun to drive. Yeah. Okay. Well, we could drive together in your yeah. new – And my your, new fixed up Porsche. Your new fixed up Porsche. Yay. So one thing I want to add when you're using any mineral-based product, which we both are right now, is the minerals will warm up as you're putting it on. So with a traditional powder, you just kind of brush it on. But with a mineral-based powder, it's nice to give it a minute. So with Bare Minerals, we used to say like swirl, tap, and then you kind of buff it in. So you really can take some time like really working it into the skin. It doesn't need to be just a dusting, and that'll warm up the minerals and create like a really nice smooth texture. So you're just kind of massaging it in. That also probably makes it look less cakey. Yeah. Okay. So I think that's good. Yours looks good. Thanks. And then yours? I'm just going to add, so I can be my normal self again, I'm just going to add some quick bronzer. I forgot my mine, so I'm going to be the... <laughs> you can be <laughs> Be the monotone face over here. Okay. So okay. just do a little threes. Okay. There. 
And that's it. Yay. What do you think? I love it. I'm so glad now I know to use my fingertips. That's a big um, takeaway for me today is change okay. my technique. Also, I'm gonna yeah. try I'm gonna try that Kosas powder. That sounds nice. It's so nice. Um, yeah. Yeah, I love it. And so I think this is gonna be my go-to winter routine. And then I'll just make note of as my skin tone gets a little lighter, as we're out of the sun a little bit, adding more of the light shade in the mixture um, versus Smart. the dark. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How I often have... do you <clears throat> go a little darker than you actually are? Are you asking how often I spray tan? <laughs> <laughs> well, I just noticed like when I put on like my summer color, it's it's a little too dark, but I do like adding a little bit more of that color back into my face. I know. So I don't know how legit that is or I mean, people I can tell. I know. I think it depends on what you're wearing for the day too, right? If I'm wearing white, yeah. I definitely don't want to go too dark because you can really look orange. Okay. Um, And then it depends on like if you're going to blend your neck um, but it's kind of trial and error. I definitely have seen photos of myself and been like, oh my gosh, my foundation is too dark. Too dark. In that. Oh. So I do try to have like really good lighting in your bathroom and try to match it as much as possible. But if I am not feeling, if I'm feeling too light, I will get a spray tan and just do my summer foundation. <laughs> oh, no. okay. Got it. I love a good <laughs> Spray tan. <laughs> yes, it does but help. But you travel so much too. So like, I'm sure you guys just came back from San Diego. You have some color in the winter. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll see how it that. is in February or March when I haven't gone anywhere for a long time. We're in our, <laughs> we're in our rainy season over here. So it's so cold and I dark. Know. I'm not paid for this. We'll get I know. through it. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think it's fair to just like try to match your okay. Neck. Yeah. And if you're feeling too fair, then get a spray tan. Okay. But there are um there are like <clears throat> if you do your own like tanner, there are facial self tanners. Like the drops Ooh. are really nice. Yeah. Um I forget about that. I, but yeah. I know. I love to have a professional do it because it's so tricky to get it perfect. Mm -hmm. And like you want it to look good if you're going through the effort. But and if you make a mistake, it's there for a few days. Yes. It's like you can't <laughs> fix it. I've done that before. I know. Uh, it's... And then when you're like not wearing much clothing, it's super obvious. And yeah. it's like, oh my God. It's like a handprint. <laughs> so like, if you're you planning on about? always being clothed, right. then it doesn't matter. But... <laughs> Oh gosh. I know. I know. Okay. okay. Well, this was well, so fun. Let's go yeah. shopping. Okay. That sounds like fun. Let's do it. Um, I know. Yay. Well, here's the takeaways um, that I've picked up. So number one, change up your foundation routine when the temperatures drop. And as Sarah mentioned, if you're used to using a brush all the time, do try the fingertips because I'm seeing a lot of difference even today just trying it out. Um, I think it's much smoother. Number two, look for liquid hydrating foundation swaps. Mm -hmm. um, give that a shot. And then try a creamy setting powder um, if you're not using that yet. So that's going to be my next step. I'm going to go out and try that creamy setting. I've never tried something like that before. My powders have always been um, oh, okay. real powder. I've never tried found, uh, foundation powder that's creamy. Great. And then number four, this is a, a really big takeaway. Always use SPF even if you don't see the sun shining. So right now for us in Northern California, it's raining and drizzling, but you can bet that Sarah and I are both using our SPF yes. anyways because we want to maintain our skin and uh, <laughs> get you know less wrinkles and all of that. So it does help with all of that. Yeah. It's so key. It's so easy to be like, oh, there's no sun and I don't need it. But yeah, I have learned otherwise. Yes. yes. The spot on my face that will be removed oh. at some point. <laughs> I know. Well, this was so much fun. Thank Yay. you everyone for listening or watching. And if you're not watching, we're on YouTube now. So you can turn in and see the video, um, which should be fun to watch or funny to watch. <laughs> um, but that's it for this episode of Platinum Perspective. Thank you for listening. Tune in every week for more beauty and psychology. And please tell your friends, rate, like, and subscribe. Bye. Bye.